The first mission was to hijack a plane. And this I never heard about hijacking, never. In our terminology, we have struggled. We have fights. We have to be, uh, could be in prisons. But this terminology was very new to my mind. And okay, when I was trained in uh, PSLP, from the beginning, had a, a slogan, men and women are in the battle of liberation. I'm Layla Khaled. I'm a Palestinian who is still a refugee since 75 years. I'm a Central Committee of Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Uh, I'm based now in Jordan. And that's it. First of all, we haven't been divided. <laughs> It's uh, since the revolution and the Intifada that happened in 87. But after Oslo Accords signed by PLO uh, leadership, who did it behind our uh, shoulders, so we had to unite. And we called for always for national unity, because unity for a people under occupation is a kind of uh, arms also. So, and we have the same many now. Uh, we are working on the ground altogether. And even before that, when Gaza was attacked for four five times during three from 2008. And uh, now, uh, Israel wants to say that they are attacking Hamas. But the children are not Hamas. Women are not Hamas. Uh, they are attacking our people. And it's a genocide attack this time. Gaza now is all over the world. The area of Gaza is now going to all continents because people of the world who support the struggle of the Palestinians, even though if they kill and kill and kill, but there will still life in Gaza. And you are the eyes of Gaza now, you are the media. So we are not afraid of what Netanyahu is saying. They are afraid because always the Palestinians are bound to hope to uh, uh, implement their dreams by struggling, by uh, uh, going to arms and other means of, uh, of resistance. They didn't stop this uh, way that the Palestinian chose. We don't have the choice of luxury anyhow, and we don't have this luxury. We have only one choice, is to fight, and to liberate our land, and to liberate ourselves also uh, from this occupation that is doing what the Nazis did the same, but they added more because the arms are new now. They are making Holocaust, and it is a uh, it's a, a war crime, um, what they are doing. That's why we called upon ourselves all, all over in Palestine to unite. And still, we didn't achieve unity as a political issue, but we achieved uh, 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 unity on the field when Israel attacks. The United Nations in 1948 uh, recognized Israel as a state and didn't recognize us as a people who have the right for uh, self-determination or right the return to our homelands that we were kicked out by force from the Zionist groups, militias, uh, in 1948. Since then, they uh, uh, drew many resolutions, but not uh, implemented. Now, yesterday, the uh, uh, Council, uh, Security Council of the United Nations did not uh, accept the Russian uh, bill uh, for den uh, denouncing the attack from Israel. And only five countries who uh, said yes for it and 
out of 15, so it, it, it didn't pass. We know now is, the world is divided according to the interests, because the interest of this uh, United States is to defend their base, the arsenal in Palestine, which they call Israel. Now, I think that the world now is, uh, there are waves of people taking streets, even in Washington and in Britain and everywhere in the world because they are supporting the right for, for the Palestinians to, to have their own state and to live on that state with dignity and with justice. But you have seen now, we don't depend upon the United Nations. We depend first upon ourselves, and then we have a lot of people all over the world supporting us. This gives us the strength and to bear the sufferings. We are ready to pay for our homeland, to pay blood, to pay from our flesh, to pay our uh, uh, families, to liberate this land. Because without that, any freedom needs also the people to sacrifice. You know, we know that they speak about terrorism, but they are the, the, uh, the heroes of terrorism. The imperialists fought everywhere in the world, in Iraq, in Syria, in, in different countries, and now they are preparing to attack China. <laughs> and uh, all the, what they say about terrorism, it tends to be for them. People have the right to resist with all means, including uh, uh, armed struggle. This is in the Charter of the United Nations. So they are violating this. They are violating the right for the people for resistance because it's their right to restore their freedom. And this is, uh, 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 as I say always, it's a fundamental law where there is repression, there is uh, resistance for it. People will not live under occupation and under repression of all kinds in the world. And history learned us that people can, when they resist, they can then keep their dignity and their uh, land. No, we have a history of re resistance. And we declared from the beginning that to restore a homeland and to be free, it means generation after generation. What happened in Palestine, we were picked out of our homeland and others came from outside with, uh, with arms and they made massacres in Palestine. It's the Zionist movement that prepared for that and the West supported the Zionist movement. Until now, they are supporting them. Why? It's because they want, this is the arsenal, that, the base in the Arab countries and in the Middle East. They want to defend it. So, they, uh, to, uh, uh, what I say, to, um, yani to justify their attitude, they want to say that we are, again, uh, uh, facing the terrorists. I mean, what, what's happening? What is this? This is terrorism. And there are state terrorism also represented by uh, uh, Israel and represented by other governments who are uh, 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 against their people. And until now, we heard in this conference and other conferences how people are suffering from, from their governments because they are on the side of the United States, or I mean the United States is always interfering in, in, in different countries. And imagine to call Latin America is the uh, background, uh, back, uh, 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 backyard of uh, the United States. They uh, uh, insult the people, their land, the, their governments even, who are allies with them, they are pressured always to say this word. It means that they don't care about the people and their freedom to live in their country, to have their resources, 
whether from water or from other natural resources, and they always want to steal the oil from the countries that have oil. Look what happened in Venezuela. They don't want to uh, make a democracy. <laughs> they are uh, you know, spreading fear. They are spreading hatred. Everywhere they go under a slogan, we want to democratize the people in this country and that country. As if the people don't have minds to get their what they need, not what they want. And unfortunately, you know, up till now, when this uh, conference was speaking, uh, discussing you know, the uh, struggle against imperialism, they, because they feel the, the injustice for their people, for their countries, for their resources, and so on. This is not in Venezuela only, but in all Latin America, because Latin America is uh, having resources for I mean, trade, for uh, uh, industry. They want to steal it. And then the people, they don't have any choice except to uh, revolt. What happened in Chile uh, at the time of Pinochet, this is, it was genocide also. What happened in Argentina? What happened in Cuba? Cuba for 60 years under the siege, but still Cuba uh, uh, is standing in front of them. So, uh, uh, and they are building their, Cuba is building its country. They export doctors to the whole world. In the time of uh, uh, Corona, we have seen how many doctors went to Italy, to Italy, in Europe, as if Europe needs more. And uh, uh, in Africa, they sent their doctors. It means that this country and its people, uh, when they revolted, they reached to the point to declare socialism in their country and its expression for the outside. And uh, uh, we look upon Cuba, uh, Cuba as one of the lessons that we are learning from them. You know, uh, I began the, uh, began the fight when I was 15 years old. I joined a movement, it's an Arabic national movement, and I was not accepted as a member at that time. So they said, you are young. I said, okay, I can help. So we were, I you mean, know, I have active, I you mean, know, we go to demonstrations and so. Uh, I was living in, in, in Lebanon. And um, then uh, after 1967, I was in Kuwait as a teacher, uh, and I quit teaching. I joined the revolution through a popular front for the liberation of Palestine because it's a part of, it was the leadership is a part of the Arab national movement and initiated and founded PFLP for uh, the revolution that broke out at that time. So I was there. Uh, and I had to, to uh, have mission. The first mission was to hijack a plane. And this I never heard about hijacking, never. In our terminology, we have struggled. We have fights. We have to be, uh, uh, could be in prisons. But this terminology was very new to my mind. And okay, when I was trained in uh, PSLP, from the beginning, had a, a slogan, men and women are in the battle of liberation. So it was implemented in this way. And at the same time, to represent also, not only the Palestinians, but all women who are under uh, oppression, uh, whoever the, uh, in the uh, nationality, uh, because in, in in our I mean, thinking and ideas that we a Palestinian cause is not only for Palestinians, but it's a part of the international liberation movement. And to show that, uh, to implement the idea by itself, when I was in the cockpit, uh, uh, I had to introduce myself for them. I took the name of the first martyr woman 
after 1967-7, Shadia Abu Ghazali, and I told the captain, because I had to inform who are we. Uh, then uh, 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 I said, we are from Che Guevara unit, to show the link in between us and the liberation movement. Uh, that was a tactic that we used. And we we intended to do it just to, uh, the, the world will listen to us, because they didn't listen to us when we were in camps, when the camps fly out, when we were sleeping to the sea in Lebanon, for example. Uh, they didn't hear the sufferings of the women and men prisoners in, uh, in chains and the tortures. So we thought that if we do this, the people will hear why. They will ask the question, why? Why are they? Who are they? And we wanted that to, to be done in, in yani, a fantastic way <laughs> and without uh, hurting anybody. And this we did it uh, in a clean operation. Uh, when I remember that, I say I'm happy and honored, privileged that I uh, participated in a multi uh, goals to achieve. We wanted to release our prisoners. We know very well, and we knew very well, that the, the passengers have nothing to do with the conflict. But we were very uh, much instructed by our leaders, don't hurt anybody, neither the passengers nor unless somebody attacks you. But we were not at that. Hmm? While the second time I was on Al Al plane, the Israeli plane, hmm? we knew that there are armed men on the plane. So the minute we stood up, they were shooting. And they, in front of my eyes, they shot my, and today I forgot to name him, Patrick Orguello from Nicaragua, in front of my eyes. I thought that they would kill me, but they didn't kill me. <laughs> so I'm here. <laughs> and uh, the pilot was, uh, they, the Israelis put in, charged him. Yes. So he had to land, he landed in London. Uh, and also the of the officer who was in the cockpit, uh, he was coming with uh, Ahron Yarev. He was the chief of the uh, military uh, intelligence, and uh, and we knew that somebody is there. Like the first one, the WA, Rabin was coming on that. He was ambassador, but he. In Rome, he changed his uh, plane. Anyhow, when I remember this, I say it many times to evaluate it, evaluate the whole issue. After three years, in every operation, we evaluate how it affected, how you know, was it successful with the goals that we intended to, especially for the release of uh, prisoners. Only uh, the Israelis accept to release two pilots, Syrian pilots, and uh, uh, after 1967, they were arrested in uh, Palestine, and uh, some uh, prisoners. But they didn't, because they didn't talk to us, of course, they don't talk to us. They talked to the uh, Red Cross, and the Red Cross uh, I mean, told us that and uh, they will uh, be released. So it's okay. And the next time we released more <laughs> for other operation, not the same. And we stopped after t three years. We stopped uh, any uh, any kind of hijacking. Uh, I continued any acting. Uh, at the beginning, uh, all the lies on me. I was young, you know, I can't face everything because I have to be educated and trained and deal with people first. So I said, I don't want to see the media. 
and the first media came to Jordan to meet me. I didn't, uh, they came to the house where I was. And when they said, is this the house of Layla Khalid? I said, no. And they were coming uh, uh, just to meet me. And then they went to our headquarters in the uh, camp in Jordan. Uh, uh, I went there and they kept, is Layla Khalid here? I said, no, he's not here. Maybe in, in the camp, in the training camp. And then I went to that training camp. Every time they see me, I said, she didn't come. Just now she left. I don't know where to. So they went again to, uh, uh, and uh, Martha Hassan uh, Kanafani, he was the chief of uh, information. Hmm? They he, they went back to him in Lebanon. He said, I didn't find, we didn't find her. So he called, where is Layla? Yani people are coming to, yani for our headquarters everywhere in the media. Uh, so they back to Jordan. And they met Dr. George Habas, the general secretary. And they said, we want to meet Layla. So he called me. Uh, that was in our office in, in the camp of Wahdat in uh, Jordan. He said, there, uh, there is a you know, TV from Italy. Uh, they want to meet you. I said, no, I don't want. Uh, uh, he said, why? I told him, I'm afraid of the cameras. He said, what? You frightened the whole world. <laughs> you are afraid of a camera. Because I, uh, I was يعني, not educated enough to speak to the media. I, that was, will be the first time in my life. Uh, and afraid to be mistaken with some expressions. And, and he told me, you go represent your uh, comrades in jail, the women and the Palestinian women. So I was crying. So I went out and I told them, I am Layla Khalid. <laughs> they three times saw me and I said, no, she is not here. And all the time I was afraid to make mistakes, political mistakes at that time. So I told them the whole story, history. Right? And they said, how do you feel? You know, sometimes the media, yeah, yeah, I'm not now speaking about you, but some people asked, very private questions. And sometimes they say, you are a beautiful woman. And, and they say, Yani, what does that mean to you, Yani? I'm here for a cause. I'm not here for... One uh, uh, media man told me, how many, uh, uh, how many hours you stand in front of the mirror? He said, what is this question? Uh, it's less than when you shave. <laughs> and let's start. What is yeah, and such questions you know, irritates me and I don't like to be answered. But at the same time, being a woman, the uh, uh, the image of uh, Arab women in general, that they are all you know, with hijab, their uh, role in life is just to get married, to have children, and she is controlled by her husband or father or whatever. Some women couldn't. That is the image. So we have to change the image also. But we have to change it through the, uh, uh, through the national uh, struggle. Because we cannot get our rights while we are still defending our humanity. And that's why. So. Up till now, uh, I'm happy uh, as a woman and as a mother, as a grandmother now, to continue the struggle with all our means. But women, uh, as according to our party, who are pregnant or mothers, they don't go for military work unless it, she is inside Palestine because the Israelis come take them from the houses. And from their houses, the women and men. We are outside, we cannot do that. If I were there, I will do it. First, I am calling the media, you. You are also people who struggle. But 
everyone in, in from his position and your cameras will uh, transfer the facts the facts about the struggle itself so you are ambassadors for us because you are with us <laughs> so because the media is two different parts one for the oppressors and they are strong enough to send their message and you can be also in a, a, a strong enough to to uh, to have the message for the world this is one thing for the international community today and yesterday and before yesterday and before that we feel that we depend upon people struggle we don't depend upon governments uh, even if they declare that they are with us we, we don't depend on them we don't uh, depend upon progressive forces in the communities you are living in and also to spread the facts of the struggle and how it is related to the capitalists not only uh, as occupation but it is related directly to the imperials because the zionist movement is a part of the imperialists so we uh, uh, we have to unite we have to uh, yani now there are means to have contacts very quick uh, uh, information on uh, social media now and uh, this makes the uh, progressive and democratic forces should unite together not as one organization but as a wide uh, front to face the enemies because uh, they are the enemies of human beings everywhere against humanity I call upon people in the world to kick out the Israeli embassies, uh, um, ambassadors and also to close their uh, uh, embassies in your countries, especially here um, in South Africa, you can do it. And uh, because if they are still on your land, it means yeah, you are uh, recognizing them as ambassadors. Uh, whose country, whose uh, government is killing our people. This is not only for uh, people, also for governments. To say, if you are with pers Palestinian struggle, then okay, take action. I said it in the conference, to take actions and uh, to implement the, what we, you say. So, if a country says we are with the Palestinians, then don't recognize these people who are killing us.